Hey everyone, Miss Butler here. Today I'm gonna help you make a foldable, which will help you with the calculations and the graphs for our heating curve problems. You're gonna need a couple of things, and I promise this will ultimately be worth your time because you can use your foldable on quizzes and tests this unit. So it's worth putting the time in to make a good one because it'll come in handy on quizzes and tests. So you're gonna need a sheet of computer paper. You're gonna need a ruler. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. And then I recommend, it's not required, but I recommend multiple colors. So if you have colored pencils, that's probably best. I didn't have any because I'm at home right now. But markers, pens, different colors um, will make your foldable easier to use. You can also use a pen and pencil for your measurements, but we're gonna make something that looks like this. All right, so when we wanna do a calculation, um, to figure out how much energy it takes to heat up a stu substance. So to raise the temperature from this degree to this degree, we're gonna use the equation Q equals MCAT. So Q equals M times C times delta T, I call that MCAT. If this equation looks foreign to you, I need you to stop this video and go watch the heating curve video. Um, it should The link should be on Canvas for you because that's where we first introduced this equation. Um, anyways. Q is the amount of heat that's required. That's usually what we're solving for. And the unit is joules, capital J. Um, M is the mass of the substance in grams. C is called the specific heat capacity. And the unit is kind of funky looking, joule slash or per gram times degree Celsius. The reason this unit is so weird is just so everything else cancels out. So we're left with the correct unit at the end. And delta T is change in temperature. So if I'm going from 20 degrees to 50 degrees, my delta T is 30. Because I went from 20 to 50, I went up 30 degrees. So you would plug in 30 for, both, for this symbol here for the triangle and the T. So that C value, that specific heat um, in our equation, is the amount of energy it takes to heat one gram of the substance one degree Celsius. And every substance has its very own specific heat capacity. It's a property of that substance. So water, liquid water, is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So basically, if I have one gram of water, if I want to heat it up one degree from 50 to 51, one gram of water heated up one degree, it will take 4.18 joules of energy to do that. Well, we're gonna use Q equals MCAT if something's heating up, but what if it's not heating up and we're going through a phase change? Um, that's where we're gonna use the heat of fusion, which is the amount of energy it takes to do the phase change of melting, so solid to liquid or the other way, liquid to solid. Um, and then we're also gonna use the heat of vaporization, which is the amount of energy required to do the phase change between liquid and gas. So vapor is how I remember a gas is a vapor. So heat of vaporization has to do with liquid to gas or gas to liquid. Okay, in our equations, it's gonna be HF. We have a unit of joule per gram. And so for water, the heat of fusion, so solid to liquid is 334. For um, vaporization, it's 2,260. So we will use these values when we're going um, for a phase change where the temperature stays the same. We're not heating it up, we're just doing a phase change. All right, we are gonna make a foldable. So you should find somewhere a piece of computer paper in your house, printer paper, and I want you to fold it Chicago hot dog style. So I have it folded Chicago hot dog style. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you probably will need your ruler and you're gonna draw four lines across the front and the lines can be 5.6 centimeters apart. If you make them 5.6 centimeters, it will fit perfectly. So you'll draw those lines and you can do the same thing on the inside as well. So you can draw those lines on the inside for, or 5.6 centimeters apart all the way across. Um, so once it's done, your front should look something like this with your little lines, 5.6 centimeters. Your back won't have anything on it. We'll save that for later. So this is the graph that we saw in the video from um, for water, because it's at zero and 100 for the flat lines, but starting at a low temperature, heat it up to zero, phase change, heat it up to 100, phase change, heat it up as a gas even hotter. We're gonna put that on the inside. So we should, actually let's first cut up. So on your foldable, um, we are going to cut, sorry, I skipped a step. We are going to cut flaps. So you have your lines drawn. I want you to cut just to the fold. So when it's done, it should look like this. Don't cut all the way through because then you'll just have strips of paper not connected. So cut on your lines 
so that you get these flaps just like this, okay? So you've cut on your lines. Now I would like you to open up your flaps. So we're on the inside now, right? Our flaps cover, and you're gonna sketch the graph. Here's my suggestion. Use two colors. Notice the green lines are the flat ones. I actually drew those first. So one, the first one is lower than the second one is higher, and then that makes it easier when you're connecting your red lines um, to go from the corner to the green, and then from green to green, and then flat line, and then uh, green to the corner. Okay, use a ruler to make your lines nice and straight, but basically each, if I close it all, <laughs> there we go, each um, flap should have a line segment. So we can open a flap and just see one part of the graph at a time. So pause the video and get that done. All right, so now you're gonna label the red lines with the states of matter. So solid, liquid, and gas. And add your flat line phase changes, so melting and boiling. So back to the front, the part that you cut, we wanna label so you know what's inside. So I labeled solid and then melting and freezing, liquid, uh, boiling and condensing, and gas. And then we're also gonna draw particle pictures on the states of matter. Remember, solids are close, a little more space between the liquids, and the gases are full apart. So you can see that here as well. Gases far, far apart, liquids a little closer, solids very close together. Um, remember, a phase change, so melting, freezing, boiling, and condensing, those are all physical changes. We're not breaking bonds, we're just moving the particles away from each other or moving them closer to each other. So we talked about Q equals M cat. That's the equation we're gonna use for the slanted lines. When we're making the particles move faster, 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 increasing their temperature, we will use Q equals M times C times delta T to calculate how much energy it takes to accomplish what's on that line. For the flat lines, that's a phase change, so we're gonna use H times M and we'll use the appropriate H value to figure out the energy needed for that phase change. So for this first line of heating up, when we're heating up a solid, we're gonna use Q equals M times C times delta T. Q is the heat in joules, M is the mass of the water in grams, C is the specific heat of solid water, and delta T is the temperature change for that line segment. So this one would be for 20 degrees because we go from negative 20 to, to zero, so a change of 20. So whatever the temperature change for that line segment is, that's what we plug in for delta T. You are gonna write this on the inside of the flap. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so when you lift up your flap, we are gonna put that equation and all of this information from the last slide right here. And we'll do that for every single flap. All of the equations and information will be written on the top, on that inside of the flap. All right, so on your second inside flap for the melting, you will write this information down. And for the slanted line in the middle, let's use Q equals MCAT again. So you should now have the solid slanted line, the melting line, and now we have liquids line. Hopefully you start to see the pattern of when we might use the MCAT equation versus the H times M equation. Add this information for the boil and condensing equation. And finally, when we're heating up a gas, we will use MCAT. So you should have equations written for every single flap, every single line segment. So if I am heating something up and we are going up the ladder, so I'm heating it up going this way, that is endothermic because I'm putting in energy. If we're cooling something down and condensing it and then cooling it down more and freezing it, that is exothermic, there's a release in energy. So inside your foldable, I want you to draw the arrow going from right to left and say endothermic and that's a positive, so we'll put a plus sign because that'll be a positive value, and then exothermic going the other way, that'll be a negative sign, a negative overall answer. So you'll put a positive sign if it's endothermic, a negative sign if it's exothermic. Okay, before we look at this problem, I want you to turn your foldable over, put your name on the back somewhere on that, on that blank backside. There's gonna be a lot of these in the chemistry classrooms. We want you to have yours. All right, so for this problem, I just want you to follow along with me. I don't want you to write anything down. So PCL3 is a compound used to manu manufacture pesticides. So what I see is this is not water. 
Don't worry though, your foldable is still useful for things that aren't water. The difference is the temperature of the flat lines might not be zero and 100, and then those constants, like the, the C specific heat value, and then the heat of fusion, things like that, will have different numbers, but they'll be given to you in the problem. So um, a re reaction requires that 96.70 grams of the chemical be raised from 32 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. How much energy will be required given that the specific heat of this chemical is 0 0.8740? And there's a hint. This is a liquid that boils at 76 degrees. So they're trying to help us out. So my first question, does this include a phase change? So basically I'm asking what line segments, what parts of the graph are we including? In this case, it is not a phase change. We are just heating up a liquid. Here's why we're going from 32 to 70, right? So we're heating it up, but for, they gave us a hint, the boiling temperature is 76. So it wouldn't be, until we got all the way up to 76, then we would have the phase change for the flat line. But that is not happening in this problem, so I can just erase with the, apparently the world's smallest eraser. Erase that guy. So we are not going all the way up to the boiling temperature, so this is just a flat line, and they told me it's a liquid, so here's how we use our foldable. We're just gonna lift the tab, for the liquid and all of the information we need is right there. I see the line segment, look at it matches my graph and all of the equations we need. So once we are ready to plug into an equation, we need to make sure we have all of the numbers and the information. Well, they're asking us how much energy, which is the same as how much heat. They gave us mass so that it is 96.70 grams. They told us the specific heat capacity for this chemical and then we can find the change in temperature by doing a little subtraction, 70 minus 32. So we're taking the big temperature minus the small temperature for this heating up process. And now we're gonna plug in those numbers to our equation, Q equals M times C times delta T. So I'm gonna take the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature, which was 38. And I get my total energy required is 3,212 joules. All right, I want you to try this one. Again, I'm not using water, but you can still do the same idea. So pause the video and try this problem on a sheet of scratch paper. All right, so I noticed they gave me the boiling temperature, but we're going from 25 up to a temperature below the boiling, and it's a liquid. So this is the same as the last problem. We're gonna use this middle flap, Q equals MCAT. They gave me the mass, they gave me the specific heat, and I can find the change in temperature by doing some subtraction. I think I got 47.7. When I multiply all of those, I get this answer. I chose to round to three digits. Um, don't worry about your rounding right now if you're in regular chem. If you're in honors, we're looking for sig figs, and the unit is capital J for joule. All right, last one. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Pause the video and try on scratch paper. So this one, um, we know that it's a solid that melts at 660 degrees, very hot. We're only going from 71 down to 18. So this one, we're not starting cold and heating up. We're starting hot and cooling it down. It's still the solid line because they told me aluminum is a solid. But instead of going up the line, we are going down the line. So I'm still going to use the equation Q equals M times C times delta T. They gave me the mass. They gave me the specific heat of solid aluminum. We take the big temperature minus the small temperature. It ended up being 53. Multiply those three numbers, and we got this big one right here, tw bigger than 20,000. Okay? And so then I rounded, again, if you're doing sig figs and honors, you can worry about sig figs. There should be three, the two, the sandwich zero, and the seven. If you are in regular chem, don't stress about sig figs right now. Just either answer is fine. Um, but here's the tricky part. Did you put a negative sign? So our answer needs to be negative. We can put it in right at the end, and that's because this is exothermic. So remember on our foldable, if we're cooling anything down and going down the graph, it's gonna be exothermic. I think you guys can see it, right? So we put a minus sign in front of our answer.